This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at text effects inside Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to format 2D text. This is a traditional basic title. When you type Control T, that title appears looking just like that. I've put it over a glimmer background just so it wouldn't be over black, but this is a default setting inside Final Cut. I've applied a basic title. This is a title that doesn't have any animation because I want to focus on formatting 2D text. So we're going to select our clip, go up to the inspector, and the format controls are here on this second icon. If we go to the font menu, one of the things I like about Final Cut is that we're able to see the actual font that we're applying to the text. For instance, uh, where to go? There's the geometric. That's a lovely sans serif face. Gil Sands is one of my favorite printed sans serif faces, and Futura is another. There's Garamond. Look at how hard Garamond is to read at the same point size as Futura, or the same point size as geometric. Garamond rough is a serif. Freehand is a brush script. You can see which font you want to use. Let's pick something. Oh, what haven't I used recently? Oh, well, let's use Gaudi heavy face. That'll be a good choice. We can then change whether it's regular, bold, italic. This has a single weight, which is okay. I'm going to grab the slider and drag the slider to the right. Except I can't go any farther to the right. My title isn't big enough. So if you click on the number itself, you can type in a numeric value for the title. Let's work with 450 point. So although the slider stops, our ability to add a numeric value does not. If I want to reposition the title, just simply click it and drag it to the position you want. I'll have it be just a little bit above vertical center. Vertical alignment and the rest of it, if you have a multi-line piece of text, there'll be a little line underneath it with a circle on it. And the vertical alignment says, is it above that little line or on the line or below the line? I never mess with this. I just simply grab the title and drag it where I want it to go. Line spacing occurs when we have more than one line of text. So let's just create two lines of text here. The line spacing, I'm grabbing and dragging it up. The line spacing, select all of my text and adjust the line spacing, increases or decreases the amount of space between the two lines. With body text, I almost never change line spacing for body text. You want body text opened up a little bit so that it's not squished too close together. But with headline text, because the letters are so big, you do want to move them closer together. I can't think of the last time I've changed body text in any video but I change the line spacing of a title text in every video because I want to have less space between the lines because it makes the headline both more compelling and easier to read. Tracking affects the spacing between the characters. I used to mess with this a lot until I had the great pleasure of working with some world-class type designers at a company called Bitstream, and they showed me how much time and care they spend getting the text to be properly spaced. And at this point, I said, guys, you know a whole lot more about design than I do. I tend not to mess with tracking. But see this choice called kerning. If I take my cursor and I put it between two characters, there's that dot that we were talking about earlier where the centering is above or below the dot. Most of the time I just move the text. But notice my cursor is between two letters. Now the kerning slider lights up and it allows me to move letters closer or farther apart. Most of the time I don't mess with this. Places where I do is where I have an A and a V next to each other, or a W and an A, or a T and any lowercase letter like an A or an I. There I'll want to put my cursor between those two letters and tighten them up so the spacing looks the same. Notice how wide the I and the T are compared to the T and the L. I'll just put my cursor between the two of them and tighten it up so the spaces between the letters look equal. That's what kerning allows us to do. Baseline 
allows me to move text above or below that baseline. That's this line that we see here. I almost never mess with that. I just simply move the text up or down. All caps allows me to set the text to be all all uppercase letters, and I can determine how big the the non-lead letter is by the all cap size. One of the things that I'm really concerned about is having my text be readable. Readability is like the number one issue to me. If I don't want it to be readable, why am I putting the text on the screen? Because of that, I don't use all caps. All caps takes longer to read, and it's harder to understand than upper and lower case. Lawyers know this key sections of the contract that they don't want you to read, they put in all uppercase letters, knowing that you're going to look at this and say, this is just too much work to work my way through. And you don't read the all uppercase portions of a contract. So what we've got here is we have the ability to set the basic fonts and size and position of our text. As we scroll farther down, this allows us to change horizontal and vertical position. We can do that the same by clicking and dragging. This allows me to change rotation. My favorite is to change the Y rotation to make the text look like it's receding into the background. The problem I have, and we'll talk more about this a little bit later, is there are no keyframe controls over the position, rotation, or scale of the text which means that I can't have it move into this position. It has to start there from the beginning. If I create this text inside motion, there is keyframe control, but not inside Final Cut. For me, that makes these settings useful, but not really useful. I tend to ignore them most of the time. We're going to talk about 3D text in just a couple minutes. If I show the face category, this allows me to change the color of the type. I can fill it with a color or fill it with a gradient or fill it with a texture, but almost all the time I use just a straight color. In fact, I can't think of when I did a 2D text with a gradient or a texture. I changed the color. We have two color pickers built into Final Cut. If I click the color chip, this opens up the Macintosh color picker, and we can change the hue, and we can change the grayscale, and we can change the saturation. Farther out from center is more saturated, closer to the center is less saturated. Or I can click the downward pointing arrow. This opens up the motion color picker. Two different ways of being able to select the grayscale value, the color value, and the saturation value of a piece of text. We can adjust the opacity of the text, which I never do here. Uh, I will almost always adjust it up in the video inspector. And we could add blurriness to the text if that makes you feel happy. But again, readability for me is my number one goal. We have truly ugly outlines, which I will not show because it just offends what little sense of style I do have, but they're there. If you want to have a glow, you can add a glow, and then I don't want to talk to you in polite society. Uh, these are wonderful, and I'm sure a six-year-old enjoys them tremendously, and, and they cause great happiness to their mother, but oh, golly, they're ugly. But one thing that is not ugly is a drop shadow. And let me explain why drop shadows are important. And we'll do that by selecting our text, going to our face, and I'm going to click a color with a color sampler right down here. And I've now changed my text to match the color of this background. If I turn the background off, there's my text. Notice they are exactly the same. Think of how many times you don't have control over the color of the background. You're shooting white text against a sky and there's a cloud in it, or the sky is slightly blown out and the text is hard to read. Drop shadows are essential to solving this problem. I'm going to select my text. I'll hide this because we're done with it. I'll go all the way down to drop shadow. And these are Larry's patented, trademark, copyrighted, published, and personal favorite drop shadow settings. I only share them with my closest friends, <laughs> which includes you, of course. I'm going to click on opacity. 95% opacity, a blur of about 3, a distance of between 5 and 10, and look at that. The text is exactly the same color as the background, and yet you can still read it. That's the power of a drop shadow. It establishes the edges 
of the character shape allowing us to read it. Now, an interesting difference, and you'll see this when I get to 3D text in just a second, 2D drop shadows need to be sharp and close, not a lot of blur, not a lot of distance. The more you move these away, notice how when the drop shadow is pushed way off, look how hard it is to read the text because now the drop shadow is an entity, a shape of its own, and I can't figure out what the letters are. But the more you keep the drop shadow close to the text, the more it improves readability. With 3D, it's just the opposite. You want 3D drop shadows to be softer and more distant to establish the fact that 3D title is actually a dimensional object some distance from the background. But with 2D, 95%, you want it dark. Blur of three, you want it sharp, and a distance of around 10. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar, taking a look at text effects inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 245. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times every month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.